I'm Brian Katherman. This is Robbie Shorn. We are talking about Worship Matters by Bob Coughlin. It is published by Crossway. Copyright is 2008. We're going to be talking about Chapter 7. But before we go there, I have a question for you, Robbie. All right, let's do it. Who is more faithful? I mean, we're going to compare some worship leaders. Okay. Yeah, we have the worship leader. He, he leads worship at his church. There's about 5,000 people that are worshiping God to his leadership, song, song selection, things of that nature. He writes his own songs. He's recorded his own CDs. So in the middle of the week, he's also going on to concerts and leading people in those songs. Okay. Maybe 10,000 people in the middle of the week worshiping, singing those songs. Uh, you could definitely say praising God. And let's just say they're they're good songs. Mm -hmm. right? uh, he reads his Bible some here and there, mostly to pick up some material for songs. He's really spending a lot of his energy pushing this music, pushing that people are singing mm -hmm. these songs mm -hmm. and selling CDs and, and things. It's not saying he's a bad guy, okay. but... I mean, if you were to look, the guy's got a huge audience, a huge following, Facebook, social media, the whole bit, mm. okay? Which usually would say, hey, that's a really good success, and it is. Sure. But now let's compare that to the guy who lives in a rural farm town, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere rural Utah, middle of nowhere, you know, bumpkin town, wherever. Sure. And the church is about 20 people. Mm -hmm. Pastor is old, bivocational, you know, there's 20 people have been trying to gather for year after year after year after year. Mm. He comes in. Uh, you know, he, he carefully picks songs out of maybe a hymnal because they don't have the technology to put up slides. Mm -hmm. He tells them, hey, we're going to sing this song. Maybe he explains a little bit of it, what it means, how it ties to Scripture, some history behind it. He plays passionately and just desperately longs to see these people praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay, And that's that's as good as it's going to get. Sure. Right. Maybe 20 people. If they're lucky by the end of the year, maybe 21 people. Yeah. Right. Sure, yeah. Who's more faithful? Uh have to go with the the bumpkin town guy yeah is it because of the challenges he's up against less i mean because here's the thing the other guy could be faithful sure but sure what is it that makes that seem so much more faithful than what the other guy is getting sure i mean because you're you're not getting the fame you're not getting the accolades you're not you know you don't have a thriving anything really it's just more your you have a task ahead of you and it may seem like drudgery at times I don't know, but if that guy is faithfully, uh, I like how you put it, plotting, faithful plotting in the same direction over time um, with the task God's given him. Like, that sounds like faithfulness to me. Now, now I want to be fair. It's not saying the other guy's not faithful. Maybe sure. all that's happening because he's absolutely faithful. Right, yeah. But we know just by human nature, I think most people would agree that when you're getting the accolades, mm -hmm. selling CDs, that does maybe help nudge you along. Sure. It'd be interesting to see if that same guy had the exact same heart mm -hmm. in the small town with 20 people. Sure. Or if the the guy in the small town, yeah, how he the, responded, yeah. if that individual had this massive audience, it'd be interesting to see. But it is helpful to think about what is faithful compared to what is success mm. in our eyes. And chapter 7 is saying a faithful worship leader. This is about the importance of being faithful. Mm. So in this chapter, Robbie, what really stood out to you, you know, just thinking in those terms. And by the way, they do kind of pull, uh, Coughlin kind of pulls the same idea that like industry success and selling CDs isn't a major of faithfulness. Yeah, yeah. You know, so he does pick on the same thing. And you know, just just to defend that, you know, that that guy, the, the first person, uh, he, he mentions, uh, if I can name drop here, he does mention Matt Redman on uh, page 58, and he's got an international influence. Mm -hmm. And he believes a lot of it has to do um, to, uh, just from Coughlin's words, he says he, Matt Redman, has a heart for theology and a deep love for his local church. You know, yeah, I, I think that's why God has given him an international influence. Is what Coughlin's sharing here, and so I mean, just to go back, it's not well, saying I, that no, I, 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 know, I agree I, yeah, with you. Yeah, I'm I, not saying disagreeing with you at all. I think <laughs> that there's a sense like like uh, my daughter listens to Kristen Geddes and we shuffle music that she listens to that before she goes to sleep. Yeah. And you listen to the music, and I, and I think, I, who knows? Yeah. Matt Redman, who knows? But you say, if they didn't have all of that, if God didn't pour that sort of a blessing out on them with the numerous numbers of people, CD sales, conferences, whatever, sure. would they still have that heart in the mm -hmm. local church? And you have to think, like, when you listen to Matt Redman, or yeah. when you listen to Keith and Kristen Getty, you think that's the case, right? Yeah, for sure. And so we're making an assumption in the question that the person with the big CD sales isn't, you know, like, hey, it's all about that. Right. But the point I'm getting at is either way, there's a heart issue. Mm. And what's driving mm. the effort 
and hopefully it's that faithfulness. And then God's going to do what God's going to do right. with the results. So yeah. I think that's a fair way to put it. But this is this chapter is really getting at how important it is that the ministry, the work, and the faithfulness defines what we do. He says on 58, you know, we don't define our ministry. God does. Mm. We can only be faithful to do what we've been called to do. Right. So what really jumps out at you here? What would you like to talk about? Just to start off, uh, bottom of the page 57, right before the call to be faithful, um, Coughlin, he gets into it by saying uh, that the worship industry isn't the standard God has given us to determine our effect effectiveness. Must be a good song. You must be great because you're exactly on the radio right. station. Yeah, <laughs> and, and then he just follows it. His next small sentence, three words. He says, what, what helps determine that effectiveness? Uh, God's word is. His word is. That is the standard mm -hmm. um, by which we are effective. And then he finishes that paragraph by saying, like, he's called us to be faithful. And so, uh, going back to that, yeah, that guy of 20 people, he's being faithful to the task that God has given him. And, you know, if he's explaining songs, if he's, like, getting into, you know, just being faithful to the text, teaching, well, we've hit on that in other videos, like, He's being faithful. Well, let's yeah. use Isaiah as an example. Isaiah 6, everyone loves going to Isaiah 6. Oh, sure. here I am, Lord, send me. Who will go for us? Who will speak for us? Yeah. And Isaiah says, here I am, me, 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 send me. Right? He wants to do this thing in Isaiah 6. And then uh, God says, great, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go and you're going to preach the word. Nobody's going to believe you. Right. And it's going to be, you know, they're going to mock you. And it's going to be terrible. And no one is going to turn to me. And he goes, how long are we going to do this? And he goes, your whole life. Mm. Uh, you know, yeah. like until yeah. the city is in total ruins, until everything is awful. Yeah worst calling ever yeah but faithfulness is saying i'm going to do what you've asked me to do god regardless of the results mm. so you think of some of these uh missionaries who've gone overseas and they prayed and they prayed and they prayed and no converts and then the very next generation after that person you know that was like a revival right <laughs> the key though is like the number of people the number of cd sales the mm. number of audience the number of video downloads is not the major no Right, and I think that's what you're getting at. Yeah, are we being really faithful great. to God's word and what his word says? That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, what else you got here? Uh, uh, we'll just continue on that train of thought. The last sentence leading into page 59, for 58 leading into page 59, it says, reaching the top of a bestseller list of or music chart is no guarantee that something actually has, uh, or someone actually has something worth saying or hearing it, and may prove just the opposite. And so it's, you know, you're just kind of hitting on that same thing, you know. Don't be tempted by the numbers. Exactly, yeah. yeah don't be tempted by the numbers. Um, and then he goes into a little bit further. He says, more people doesn't always mean we're pleasing God. He just, uh, yeah. Uh, he kind of uses a governing word. You know, like to, if we make these things the important things, then they govern us. Mm -hmm. If CD sales are the important things, then the number of sales are going to govern us. Sure. If uh, the technology and our use of it is a good important thing, that's going to govern us. And I think the idea is if you get into those things, mm -hmm. I think I highlighted this. If your leadership focuses on musical experiences, you'll reap a desire for better sound, cooler progressions, uh, more and more creative arrangements. This is on page sixty now. If we sow to uh, immediate, excuse me. If we I missed, lost my place. If we sow to immediate feelings, we'll reap meetings driven by the pursuit of emotional highs. If we lead in such a way that we're the center of attention, mm -hmm. we'll reap a man-centered focus. Mm -hmm. Shallow compliments and ungodly comparisons. On the other hand, mm -hmm. if we sow to God's glory in Christ, we'll reap the fruit of people in awe of God's greatness and goodness. And mm -hmm. so, like, it depends on what you're being governed by, or it depends on the seeds you're sowing, or what's driving you. Right. I think that's the measure of this faithfulness. That's... What is the driving force of what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think something, I mean, it's not in that same section per se, but it's uh, two paragraphs up from Faithful to Lead on page 59. The very last sentence, it says, We're seeking to impress upon people the greatness of the Savior whose glory transcends our surroundings and technology. I mean, are we pointing people to Jesus? Are we trying to show them like how great and how good and how glorious Jesus really is? Yeah. That's yeah. That's, that's what faithfulness is. Faithful. So, so like, I, you don't want to be... You don't want to be driven by the wrong things. But let's be honest. As human beings, sure. we can kind of be driven by the wrong things. Every Sunday, every Sunday, sure. right before we start, I look around. I'm like, There's a lot of empty rows. Where are all these families we know and love? Mm -hmm. What is going on? None of the kids are all checked in. And it just seems like nobody's going to come to church today. Sure. And and then I sit down. Mm -hmm. Service is about to start. Yeah. And then the next time I stand up, is usually at the point of the offering's been taken, the musical worship is done, I'm standing up and getting ready to preach, and I turn around, and like, 
the whole place is full. I'm like, yep. you know why? I can't let, if I turn around one Sunday and the whole place is still empty, I cannot let that be my motivating factor. Sure. I cannot let that discourage me. I cannot let that wreck me. I have to say, this is for faithfulness and for the glory of God that we're going to preach the word. Hmm. And so if all the rows are still empty, yeah, so be it. Yeah. But honestly, sometimes internally I turn around and it's like, oh, whew, oh, good. you know. Like, yeah, and, yeah. and sometimes that's not always for... Uh, just the love of those families. A lot of times it is, hey, where's this family? And where's these? where are these people? Yeah. But sometimes it's just, why are there so many empty rows? That's yeah, a terrible motivator. Here? Yeah. But it's a human nature motivator. And I think a lot of times that does sort of influence what people are doing. Oh, well, small crowd. You know, it's only this little bumpkin town church. Who cares? Sure, no, am God I giving cares. it my best effort? God yeah. cares. Yeah, you know, exactly. And that guy playing the piano and leading with the hymnal or whatever it is. Yeah. God cares. Yeah. And so if you're willing, I think, I think it might have been Howard Hendricks. Howard Hendricks is the one who said, you know, I don't care what you can do with 120 people. I want to see what you can do with 12. Mm. Like, yeah. uh, like, what can you, like, are you going to be faithful with the smaller, not the larger? The let's let's, let's be people. honest. Like, the smaller the crowd, it's harder. It's hard. Yeah, it's, no, it's it, because I think yeah. we're fueled by those bigger things. Like, it, yeah. it is tough. Yeah. But faithfulness dictates that we need to continue to do what we're doing for the purposes not of the crowd or right. the accolades or whatever, but for the glory of God. Uh, Coughlin says here, um, last Purple paragraph of si- yeah, last paragraph of six. He says, ultimately, the fruit of faithful leadership is knowing we please the audience of one. Our joy doesn't come from leading the perfect worship time, winning awards, or having a song on the worship charts. Our goal isn't success, popularity, or personal fulfillment. It's anticipating, by God's grace and for the glory of Jesus Christ, that we'll hear on that last day, "Well done, good and faithful servant." That's the note I think we should end on. That's Matthew 25, yes. verses 21 through 23. And and I think that's what we should be shooting for. Mm. Hearing, well done, yeah. good and faithful servant. Yeah. Uh, you know, Stephen, uh, uh, he was yeah. a deacon, right? Yeah. And did he go off and plant a bunch of churches and become a big mega church pastor? No, he became a deacon. He was serving, in the process of serving. He's talking about God. They stoned him to death. Yeah. And you just no you have to imagine. <laughs> yeah. It's, well done. Good and faithful servant. He's like, all I did was serve a little bit and preach a sermon. and got myself killed. Yeah, you know, and and that was what he was called to. Yeah, and he was faithful to it, and yeah. he didn't, you know, push away from God. <clears throat> he just faithfully did what he was called to do. Mm. Yeah. So that's, I think that's where we're at. That's that's exactly where we are. It's it, yeah, hearing that. Well done, good and faithful servant. Were we faithful to the point of being heard here? Like, or, you know, like that we want to hear when we get off a platform, hey, that was a great job, et cetera. Or were we faithful mm-hmm. to the point of like, hey, like when we see the Lord, like, hey, well done. Good job. I want it from God. Yeah. Because exactly. what you get from people is okay. You get your reward now. Yeah. But we want it from God. That's a good way to end. That's a great, great chapter.